heartland of America, to every nation on earth. This is Jack Van Empe Presents, the truth in news and commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. Oh, my friends, we have so much to share with you today. I wish that we could be right there with you, but we thank God so very much for the opportunity to enter into your home or wherever you watch this program. The first thing that we are going to zero in on is this. The Assembly of God World Missions demands scriptural integrity from Wycliffe Bible Translators. We'll deal with that. And the deception of Chrislam. Oh, and Iran is ready to wipe Israel off the map. They've made their boasts, and they say, we're ready. Now, you know, uh, as I said, uh, I love this time of year. I've said it so very, very often to you. My favorite time is spring, and, of course, zeroing in on Easter, which is just around the corner, friends. We're going to be doing for you next week our Easter program. And we trust that some of the questions that may be in your mind, you want to get your neighbors watching. Because really, did Jesus really come out of that grave? Dr. Van Impey is going to deal with that so very, very much. And, Rick yes, Stella, Jack. Let me yes. say something. Your brother Don Shelton called the other day, and he said, this is March, and the sap is running here in my trees. Yes. And I said, that's nothing. I said, when the sap begins to run, the girl begins to chase him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's spring. Okay. <laughs> All right, we get so many letters from people who say, thank you, Jack, thank you so much for not compromising, for giving us the truth and the fact as to where America is really headed. Now, this is a, a letter that we received from Dwayne D. Williams. Read it with me, if you will. Thank you. And thank you for not compromising your stand on awakening America to the threat carnal Christianity poses to our country and way of life. It is hard to believe you would be censored by TBN for your stand against false prophets and self-promoting ministers. My heart aches as I see the downward spiral our nation is undergoing. We truly thank you for that letter. Um, Mr. Williams, from the bottom of our hearts, we received so many like this. Now, Jack, I thank him, too, for not compromising. Where do you really think our nation is going right now? Well, let me add that I received 10,000 emails from all over America congratulating me for taking that stand against apostasy. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you where we're headed. It's going to get worse and worse because this is the final sign. The Bible teaches that a one world government will arise in Revelation 13, verse 1, and a world religion in that same chapter, verses 11 to 18. And the leader of the world religion has the two horns of a lamb, but he speaks as a dragon. And the two horns stand for Christianity because Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, John 1, And the dragon typifies his slighted tongue filled with poison because the dragon is Satan, Revelation 20, verse 2. And we are in real trouble. This is the final sign, and so we're beginning to see the false Christ and the false prophets coming from everywhere. And that's what Jesus said concerning the final sign. Rexella, we're about to release in two weeks from now, Awake America, the world's final warning. Oh, I'm so excited, and I'm going to prove that we are the generation. I won't set the day and the hour, but we're the generation. It's going to happen very soon. Why? Listen to Jesus. Just before I come, there should be false Christs and false prophets. Matthew chapter 24, verses 5, 11, and verse 24. And they're even going to create signs and wonders so that even the elect shall be deceived. And the elect are the best cream of the crop. Christians who are being bamfoozled right now. And that, of course, you find in uh, 1 Peter 1, 2, and Titus 1, 1. And the Bible says in Matthew 7, 15, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but 
inwardly. They're ravening wolves, and they're tearing our people apart. And I'll name names as long as God lets me live, because I'm against these false prophets. That's why our God, Yahweh, said in Jeremiah 14, verse 14, the prophets are lying prophets in my name, but I have not sent them. Oh, and they're going to pay a price when they meet Jesus as he returns in Jude, verses 13. And 14 and 15, read it when the program ends. But Rexella, it's arrived. Yes. And we're going to really get into this. And I want to show you something. We have been hitting Wycliffe translators because of what they've done to God's Word. Matthew 28, 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and change it to this. Go into all the world and cleanse them in the name of Allah and his Messiah, Makti. Don't you dare move that dial because I'm going to tell you what this really means and how serious it really is because of substituting Makti for the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know, Wycliffe used to be such a great godly organization. This is from my library. I have 10,000, 12,000 volumes there for it. The Wycliffe Bible Commentary, put out by Moody Bible Institute. Three of the greatest theologians ever, many of them my friends. Oh, how they stood for the book. But apostasy creeps in. That's the final thing in 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 3 to 8. Apostasia, a defection from the Christian faith. God forgive these men who've done away with this great book originally promoted by Wycliffe. Oh my, we're going to be talking about that in just a moment. But I want to back up to something here as to where our nation is going. What will be the result? Do you remember that wonderful name, Dr. Peter Marshall? Oh, he was a great man, a profound speaker and chaplain of the United States Senate. There you see him, Dr. Peter Marshall. And this is what he said. Oh my, the choice before us is plain. Christ or chaos, conviction or compromise, discipline or disintegration. Oh my! Disintegration oh my. means a cave in. A cave in, absolutely. And I, I think that we need to really put our nation right now in our focus. If we're going in that direction with chaos and all the rest that he said, uh, Jack, what we need to stand up for our faith, I believe. Oh, and I'm standing up, and that's why the Apostle Paul said in 1 Timothy 6, 12, fight the good fight of faith, endure affliction. Those who criticize you for standing up for the faith, I'm going to do it. Listen to me, my dear friend. We have been called for this hour in history at Rex and I to speak out and uplift the word of the Lord. My Bible says, and Paul wrote it through the Holy Spirit's inspiration in 2 Timothy 4, verses 2 to 4. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. It's here. But they'll heap to themselves teachers who will tickle their ears. And they shall be turned away from the faith and from true doctrine to fables. We got a lot of fable preachers doing little sermonettes that create Christianettes in our pulpits today. Get into the Word. All of Scripture is given by inspiration of God that is profitable for doctrine. And when you're not preaching doctrine, you are out of the will of God as a minister of the Lord Jesus Christ. Did Paul do what he said? Fight the good fight of faith. He's coming to the end in First Timothy four beginning with verse 6. And he said, the time of my departure is at hand. I'm going home to see Jesus. I've come to the end. Oh, but I've fought a good fight, and I've kept the faith. Henceforth, ah, there's laid for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them who love his appearing. Preacher, there are 10,385 verses on the second coming of Christ, one out of every four, and you've never mentioned it. You're robbing your members of the watcher's crown in 2 Timothy 4.8. He said, this crown is not only for me, but for all of them also who love his appearing. That's why Titus 2.13 says, looking for that blessed hope, the rapture, and the glorious appearing 
of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's look. So we have a crown, a watcher's crown, presented to us to lay at the feet of Jesus. Oh, Jack, I love the word. I love to hear him quote the Bible, don't you? And everything that he gives to us week after week, he always backs up with the Bible. I love that. Well, you know, we've used a word. and ha Have you tried it out yet, Chrislam? Have you asked your neighbor, have you heard of Chrislam, and what was their reply to you? Try it sometime, and I think you'll be quite surprised. We've been trying to open the eyes of people around the world as to what Chrislam is. Now, there's still some confusion out there as to what it is, so take a look, if you will, please, at this DVD, The Deception of Chrislam. Take a stand, ministries. And, of course, this was by Eric Barger. Now, you know, Jack, in this particular video, he addresses some things, the deception of Chrislam. You know, friends, my faith is centered around three things, and Chrislam does away with those three things. And I'm going to ask Jack about those three things. First of all, it has to do with Jesus being the Son of God, the second member of the Trinity. Now, they do away with that. If you go with Chrislam, you do away with that. Is that correct, Jack? Oh, you better believe it, Roxanne. I'm going to tell you something. We had a president who was promoting through the United Nations the blasphemy law that if anyone said anything against Islam, against Muhammad or the Quran, they could be severely punished and even put to death. But what they do with Jesus in the Sunnahs and hadiths of Muhammad and in the Quran is real blasphemy. And we Christians sit back in fear and say nothing. Now, I want you to get this, all right? When our Jesus returns, he is the chief lieutenant for Mahdi, and he is the executioner to kill Jews and Christians who won't convert. I'll give you that in a moment where you can find it in the Quran. Jesus comes back and says, I was not God. I'm not a deity. I didn't die on a cross. I've come back to smash all the crosses because I wasn't genuine as what I told you or what I did for you. Imagine, as he endured all that pain, he didn't mean it. God forgive him. And he said, it is my duty as an evangelist for Mufti, for I've converted since I left, to win all Jews and Christians who, if they convert, they'll be fine. If they don't, it's my job to put them to death. I'm going to show you that from the leader of the movement in a few moments. But you say, is that in the Quran? I won't say surahs, because you don't understand that. It means chapters. Chapter 4, verses 157 to 59, uh, verses 172 and 73, chapter 5, verses 72 and 73, chapter uh, 6 verse 19 and chapter 9 verse 30 and chapter 19 verses 33 to 88. I'll tell you folks, we are in trouble. Now, what's the next thing? They the say? next thing, yes. my The second thing of the three that I mentioned, my faith is centered around, is that Jesus is the Son of God. Now, you know, they have left out that in the New Translations 91 times in the New Translation, left out Son of God. Rex, I have a book here, one of my 12,000, Chrislam, how missionaries are promoting an Islamized gospel all because of Wycliffe, Sill, and frontier translators who've apostatized from the faith, as I've already said. Now, I want you to get this very carefully because she just asked me, my little sweetheart there, uh, what this is all about, that he's not the son of God now 91 times. All right, listen to this. Page 181. The Quran anathematizes, curses, and damns anyone daring to say that Jesus is the Son of God, guaranteeing they will go to hell. That's the Quran. Oh. Where? Chapter 4, 165, chapter 5, verse 18, chapter 6, verse 101, chapter 9, verse 30, chapter 17, 111, chapter 19, verse 35, verses 88 to 92, and chapter 20. 3, verse 91, eight times. Now, may I speak to you for a moment, Rick Warren, you at Saddleback Church, who is bringing in the clerics from Islam in your area, Muslim leaders, 
and your own ministering staff to find the similarities between the Bible and the Quran? What about the contrasts? That's pretty serious business.